is a gorgeous Easter Sunday here on the north side of Chicago as WGN Sports on the U brings you Cubs baseball. It's the Hyundai leadoff man. Today, the Cubs look for their first series victory of 2014. Happy Easter, everyone. I'm Len Casper. We'll hear from Jim Deshays a little later on. The Cubs have a chance, as I mentioned, to win their first series of the season after a, a win yesterday, snapping a five-game losing streak. Let's check out the highlights of the middle game of this series after the Reds took game one, four to one, and everyone into the holiday spirit. Cubs came in having scored nine runs over their previous five games, but they jumped on left-hander Tony Cingrani early. A run in the first on a Ruggiano RBI single. A run in the second on a Mike Old home run, his third of the young season. They get another run in the third inning. Fielder's choice here by Starlin Castro. And as Emilio Bonifacio crosses the dish for the second time, Edwin Jackson with that early run support was very good. Five and two thirds innings, he gave up two runs. He mixed his pitches, changed speeds well throughout the afternoon, as you see. Several of his strikeouts. Sixth inning now. Cubs able to tack on. Darwin Barney with his first homer of the season. That's off Logan Andrusik as the Cubs were able to get to their bullpen. 5 2 Cubs. Seventh inning now 6 4 until Wellington Castillo goes deep. That made it 8 to 4. And then in a non save spot, Pedro Strope with a 1 2 3 ninth. He gets Brandon Phillips on the ground out. And the Cubs end their five game losing streak, their first win in over a week. And you see the middle of the order knocking in seven of the Cubs' eight runs. Carlos Villanueva gets the start for the Cubs today. The leadoff man is brought to you by your Chicago and Northwest Indiana Hyundai dealers who invite you to come test drive the all new Hyundai Santa Fe. Visit myhyundaychicago.com. Brought to you by your Chicago and Northwest Indiana Hyundai dealers who invite you to come in and test drive our award winning lineup today. Visit buyhyundai.com. Well, coming up tonight on WGN, you will not want to miss Wrigley 100, a century celebration. It starts at 7 o'clock, 7 to 9 p.m., as we honor this beautiful ballpark. Attention. Attention, please. Have your pencil and scorecards ready, and I'll give you the correct lineup for today's ball game. That's him. Let's go.
Day leadoff man. Brought to you by your Chicago and Northwest Indiana Hyundai dealers who invite you to come in and test drive our award-winning lineup today. Visit buyhyundai.com. Getting his set for Cubs baseball, Carlos Villanueva against Homer Bailey of the Reds. And let's go first to third as we wrap up the leadoff man. Henderson Alvarez yesterday faced one over the minimum in a shutout win over the Mariners, who dropped five in a row going into that game today in South Florida. How about the Braves? All kinds of pitching injuries, but their starters have been tremendous. Urban Santana got the win at the Mets. Albert Pujols now two away from a milestone 498 career home runs. The Angels though just eight and nine through their first 17. What a gorgeous day Easter Sunday 2014. We'll have the Reds and the Cubs coming up next. guy doesn't say Easter I don't know what does as WGN Sports on the U brings you Chicago Cubs baseball holiday matinee action here on a gorgeous day from Wrigley Field hope you're having a great Easter weekend along with Jim Deshays I'm Len Casper the Cubs offense has been all over the place they were hot they were cold and yesterday got hot again yeah, after being ice cold getting skunked in that doubleheader in New York and then uh, managing just one run against the Reds in the first game of the series yesterday a different story however banged out 11 hits they also drew five walks and hit a season high three home runs in support of Edwin Jackson who was really good as well the wind is blowing out slightly today could be an offensive afternoon Carlos Villanueva certainly hopes it is not for the visitors yeah both the starting pitchers today looking to bounce back from rough starts Carlos Villanueva last time out three innings allowed nine runs a clear high nine runs in that start against St. Louis his previous start here against the Phillies was very very good he's looking up more for something like that today Homer Bailey he's had his struggles too. check out his line from last time out five innings he punched out nine didn't walk anybody but allowed four home runs his ERA in the early going up over eight let's go down to the field now it's Sunday God bless America followed by our national anthem Join Wayne and Kathleen Mesmer as they honor our nation with God bless America followed by our national anthem America, land that I love, stand beside her and guide. 
guide her through the night with the light from above. From the mountains to the prairies to the oceans white with foam. God bless America. My home, sweet home, God bless America, my home, sweet home. early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the Cubs baseball brought to you by Budweiser. Great times are waiting. Grab some buds. Ford, manufacturers of America's best selling brand. Check out our best selling lineup at your local Ford store or online at localfordstores.com. And by Xfinity, your home for the most live sports.
Uh, what a day. Chicago Cubs baseball in high definition is brought to you by Xfinity, your home for the most live sports. Let's get today's umpires for the series finale. Corey Blazer will work the plate. Jim Joyce, the crew chiefs at first. Doug Eddings at second. Marvin Hudson is over at third. As we celebrate 100 years of this ballpark, there have been two no hitters thrown by Cubs opponents, both with the Cincinnati Reds. And older Cub fans will remember Jim Maloney back on August 19, 1965, game one of a doubleheader. He faced 40 Cub batters. It was a 10 inning no hitter. He walked 10, and let's hear Jack Brickhouse's call of the finish. Then in 1965, it was Jim Maloney's turn. After 12 strikeouts and 10 walks, Maloney faced his 40th batter, Ernie Banks, with the tying run on first. Ground ball. Picked by Cardenas over to second out. Rose relays. The ball game is all over. Maloney's got a no-hitter. That was the second Reds no-hitter in this ballpark. Fred Tony back in 1917. Also, that was a double no hitter more on that later we'd love to hear from you via email we're on Facebook we're on Twitter as well oh what a day huh oh man if you can't play today you cannot play this is just absolutely beautiful nice enough or maybe you'd leave the dugout sneak out of the clubhouse and climb up on a rooftop and watch an inning or two as Tom Browning did back in the day there's your buddy <laughs> there's Tommy he was very left handed. 1993, Tom Browning went up there. And uh, I believe David Johnson was his manager in Cincinnati. Dropped a, a hefty fine on him, but it was worth it. And much more coming up on the two hour special tonight at 7 on WGN Wrigley 100, a century celebration. And today, in fact, is the 98th anniversary of the Cubs' first game in this ballpark. And sure enough, it was against the Reds. They beat Cincinnati seven to six. Wow, that is neat. What is that? The, that's the official scorecard of that game, sponsored by the Boston Store and the ball player, the tennis player, the golfer, the fisherman, the boatsman, the autoist. Is that still a term? The photographer, the cyclist. Yeah. yeah. I'm an autoist. So the Cubs take the field behind Carlos Villanueva. Let's get the Reds starting lineup written out by their first year manager, Brian Price. Billy Hamilton will lead it off. He's had a good series. Slow start to the season, but now up into the 200s. Joey Votto's been great since going up to the two spot. He flip flopped with Brandon Phillips. Jay Bruce will clean up Todd Frazier third Ryan Ludwig back in the lineup fouled a ball off his left big toe on Friday and sat yesterday. Devin Mezzarocco has been their hottest hitter. Cozart's the shortstop and Bailey the pitcher bats ninth. Ricky Renteria continues to play the matchup game. It's been a bit of a revolving door in the outfield today. It's Sweeney Bonifacio and Sherholtz covering the outfield and third to first we go old Castro Barney and Rizzo boy Darwin Barney started a pretty double play. Yesterday, Wellington Castillo is behind the plate for Carlos Villanueva. Uh, two starts, two appearances out of the pen. He's gotten decisions all four times he's pitched. He's one and three now with an 11.57 ERA, as I mentioned moments ago. Uh, last time out, not pretty. Allowed nine runs, a career high nine runs. So nine in the third innings, 20 hits allowed so far for Carlos. Cubs trying to win a series for the first time this year and in fact uh, dating back to the end of last year they are winless over their last 10 sets so be nice to see them win back to back games and take a series against one of their division opponents they got a scuffling Diamondbacks team coming to town for four starting tomorrow so it'd be nice to parlay a series win and then head into that four game set So we're set. It's Billy Hamilton. Three hits yesterday. 
He was really scuffling his first 12 games was hitting 140, but he's gone six for 13 since. With four stolen bases. And Villanueva ready to work and a fastball at 86 for strike one. That's something he did not do as often in his last start as he did in his previous start against the Phillies. He threw strike one quite often against that Philly club. Worked from behind last time out against the Cardinals. Good hook there. He's a four pitch pitcher. He's not going to blow you away. Fastball about 87. You see a little mild breeze. Beautiful weather. Great day to play. Great day to fire up the grill and watch some hardball. Eat too much candy. Hamilton swings and misses. Pitch was in the dirt, so Castillo has to fire down to Rizzo for the out. He makes quick work of the speedy Hamilton as he buries a slider down towards his back foot. Of interesting uh, Votto came up to hit and realized Hamilton's bat it was lying right in front of the batter's box. So handed it to the bat boy. Eighth consecutive game in the two hole for Votto's OPS almost 1400 since his manager moved him up one spot. Tap foul. Yeah, check out the numbers on Joey Votto. 453 on base percentage, slugging 576. And you know, you see some. In, in, it's hard to qualify Votto as a slugger. He has you know plenty of power, but he's thought of as more of a line drive hitter. So he's tougher to defend. You don't see the extreme shifts with Votto that you do with a lot of sluggers. Hits the ball all over the field. A line drive machine. I know we were tracking it last year, late in the year last year. I don't know if he, how he finished up, but he had not popped up to the infield once. A whole year. Pretty amazing. Villanueva with a 1 2 pitch, and it's high. Phillips on deck just underway. And the 2 2 is rolled foul past Billy Hatcher, former Cub and current Reds first base coach. World Series hero for the Reds back in 1990. Full count three and two. On certain days you just almost if you're a pitcher JD you go hey Joey we'll start three and two. Yeah let's, let's just not even mess around save with some bullets. Yep let's five just... pitches. Here it comes, and he walked him. Well, Votto on base three times yesterday, and walked twice in the first game of the series. So he's trying everything. He's done up, down, in, and out. Ultimately, if you're going to get him to offer at a 3 2 pitch, you, you don't have to groove it, but if you're not on the plate, you've got to be awfully close, or he's not going to offer. Now, Phillips on it. Bitterly cold day on Friday. He left early with back spasms after going one for two. Got right back in the lineup yesterday, went 0 for 5. And he looks at ball one outside. Pitchers giving up league average in terms of whether the opponent will score in this situation, but it's early.
Jake Arietta might make his final rehab outing at Daytona tomorrow. It certainly could affect Villanueva's spot in the rotation here over the next week or so. Swing and a miss on a slider. A good off speed pitch there. Now, I think it was change a change, up. yeah. Yep, you're right. A straight change right. to the glove side. That is a very difficult pitch to execute. And that was a dandy on 2 0. Phillips sitting on a fastball. Edwin Jackson really good yesterday. Allowed a couple of runs on eight hits at five and two thirds. Plenty of traffic, but allowed just the two runs. Phillips pops it up. And Botto didn't Bottle realize going. there's only one out as Rizzo will make the catch. And Botto had to scamper back to the bag. Points at his head, a little brain cramp. I would like to have had, had a heart monitor on him at the point he realized that there was only one out. And he sees this guy, and, ah, two outs, I better run. And then at some point, something kicked in. I don't know if he heard one of his base coaches. You see Barney hustling over the cover of the bag. Our speed replay brought to you by Xfinity. Panic kicks in, and he's able to scramble back. Xfinity, you're home for the most live sports. That's your speed replay. You're saying it'd be the equivalent of the uh, fight or flight moment? Yeah, yep, exactly. Yeah. Got a little sweat break out in the back of his legs. Jay Bruce, three for three with a walk on Saturday, and he swings and misses. Billy Hatcher over there in his ear said, man, don't do that. You're going to get me fired. My number one priority is the first base coach is to make sure you know how many outs there are and you behave accordingly. Oh, one is low. Yeah, in all likelihood, it seems like Arietta will rejoin the rotation and Carlos will move back into the bullpen. As a starter last year, Carlos was 1 and 7 with a 450 ERA. Deserved much better. He had a lot of good starts early on, replacing an injured Matt Garza. Just didn't get much run support. Made 16 starts overall through 90 innings as a starter. In the wave is 30. 6 2, 2 15. Came to the Cubs prior to last year on a two year contract. And the 1 1, Bruce able to hold up. Like a good call. He came into this series at a buck fifty two. So it would have looked a lot worse had he not had the game he had yesterday. Two one pitches outside. It's three and one with Todd Frazier on deck. No real significant advantage left handed hitters versus right against Villanueva. It's because of his breaking stuff. Good command of his change up. And this situation here where Bruce, big strong guy, would love to get a fastball on 3 1, but he can't count on it. In actuality, you're more likely to get the change up in a fastball count from Carlos, especially if you're a dangerous guy like Jay Bruce. There are his numbers versus left and right so far. So even with a low batting average, his OPS is above major league average. Votto takes off with two outs, and he'll have to head back to first. Make sure you tweet us your Cubs selfies at hashtag WGN Cubs. 
Oh, that's a good-looking group the right there. Group, yeah. Cubs clubhouse staff. Got a couple of Hellmans in there. You gotta dance when you hear this song. Yeah. And wear a funky hat. Called strike three. And that will end the inning. The Cubs are coming up against Homer Bailey. Brought to you by Mazda in the 2014 Mazda 3 with seamless connectivity. Bonifacio, the really good day yesterday after struggling coming into this series. Sweeney and left still trying to get it going. Rizzo, Scherholz, Castro, and Mike Olt in the middle. Olt and Castillo with homers yesterday. Darwin Barney went deep as well. And the pitcher is Villanueva. See how they set up defensively for the Reds this afternoon. Outfield of Ludwig Hamilton, Bruce. Frazier, Cozart, Phillips, Votto. Infield remains intact. And Devin Mezzarocco behind the plate for Homer Bailey. He's 0-1 with an 8.16. He's made 13 starts in his career against the Cubs. The Reds are 11-2 in those 13 ball games. He's 7-2 lifetime against the Cubs. Strike call to Bonifacio. The numbers on Homer. On one, 8.16. He's allowed six long ones in 14 innings. Ground ball and a base hit. Actually, Phillips' first move was to his left. I don't think he would have gotten it either way. Coming off a three hit afternoon yesterday. The ball's in on Bonifacio. And a little hesitation, I guess, by yeah, Phillips. Yeah, maybe just a little lean, saw the ball in, maybe thought he'd be more likely to pull that ball, or maybe just didn't have his feet set. Anyway, it's a leadoff knock for Bonifacio. Bailey plays the power game, mid-90s fastball, slider curve, and a split. Bonifacio takes off on the first pitch, and he is safe. Number nine, he's one off the major league lead. Cubs wasting no time. Bonifacio, no doubt, with a green light. Knocking a stolen base. A chance to draw first blood here for Ryan Sweeney. We need something good to happen. He's been scuffling. Outside 2-0. and oh. So, yeah, Homer Bailey comes in. You know, two career no-hitters. Got a new six-year contract. But... Off to a pretty bad start. Yeah, his line last time out, as I mentioned, real funky. Five innings, strikes out nine, so that speaks to the dominant stuff, but clearly made some mistakes in the zone, allowing four home runs. It was a game in which there were ten home runs 
hit between the two clubs, Pittsburgh and Cincinnati. Going up and in here on the 2 1, and Sweeney pops it up. And it's Phillips for the first out. Good thing the sunglasses are on top of his hat. His logo might have got a sunburn. His eyes are probably watering right now. So here's my question. I, I've talked to guys that say, well, I just don't like wearing the sunglasses. I don't see the ball off the bat. So why take them out there? Why, just style points, I guess. I guess. Yeah, you, you see it a lot. He's had the sunglasses but not using them. Here's Rizzo. Left in the late innings yesterday with back spasms, but says he's fine today. And right back in the lineup. Well, you want the left-handed bats in there, at least when you look at the numbers so far this year, left-handed hitters hitting 519 against Homer Bailey, 14 out of 27. <laughs> Anthony and his Anthony Rizzo Family Foundation will be hosting cook-off for cancer coming up. Check out his platoon splits. On Friday, May 16th. Go to Cubs.com slash cook for more information. Should be a great event. In the shallow left, Ludwig. The slide, he can't get it. Bonifacio's got a hold at second, and Rizzo with a bloop single. Ludwig fouled the ball off his foot the other day. A little bit of a tender foot. And I don't know. I think he went into a slide a little too early. He slides. That ball drops right in front of him. If he takes another stride, he probably catches that ball on the fly. But Rizzo will take it. Talk about a cheap knock. Bring up Nate Scherholtz. Just one out of his last 17 as he steps in. No. On the outside corner, strike one. Done a nice job so far in this spot. At least getting somebody to the dish. Nate still looking for his first long ball of the year. A little bit late on that inside fastball from Bailey. Cubs have only gotten two home runs from their outfielders. I guess that would be Junior Lake and Junior Lake. Stylish shades for Junior Lake today on the bench. Bailey's 0 2. Sure holds fouls. First inning singles by Bonifacio and Rizzo. As they try to get early runs again. Bailey now pitching with the burden of expectation with the big contract that the uh, Reds signed him to. And boy, Nate's been really good against him. Seven out of 15 with a long one. Homer Bailey, 49 and 46 in his career, just 27 years of age. So every time you sign a pitcher to a long term deal like that, there's a bit of a risk, but they think the upside is really good for Homer Bailey. Strikes out Sherholtz two down. Good split there. 
Mercado with a couple no hitters on his resume. One two years ago, another one last year. We'll see if Castro can get it done here with two outs. For the most part, they've been trying to stay away from the fastball with Castro in this series. And it's a breaking ball here to get things started. Bailey's from LaGrange, Texas. Given name is David, but they call him Homer after his great grandfather. All the Texas right handers wear 34, don't they? Yeah, it's a the normal Woody thing. Kashner, Bailey, Nolan Ryan. Although Kashner. Or 34 because of Kerry Wood who wore it yeah, because well, of Nolan Ryan. So right, let's go right down the list. At some point someone will wear it because of Homer Bailey. <laughs> Josh Beckett never wore it though, did he? You wear 34? No, I don't believe so. <laughs> That was A.J. Burnett's number. Yeah. He was in Florida. Roger Clemens didn't wear it either. Talking about hard throwing right handers from Texas. You got to include Clemens. First round pick of the Reds was Bailey back in 2004. The seventh overall pick in the draft that year. Uh, didn't have to be inside two and two. Not saying it wasn't. I'm just saying it didn't have to be. Let's take a look on our Xfinity pitch tracks. Fast ball. Yeah, a little inside. Normally you don't get that call. A lot of thinking going on. It's Mike Alt on deck. Back to back starts this weekend. Really ready for a 2 2 and Castro with a very strange. Swing there. I thought that ball actually bounced, but it didn't. He went down to get it, popped it up, and the inning comes to an end.
Manning and uh, Starlin Castro protecting the wicket here, hitting this ball on a bounce. That was the strangest thing I've ever seen. I, I, at first, J.D., I thought he bounced it off the plate, but it went so high that yeah. he popped up a pitch that it hit the dirt before he made contact. Might have, uh, might have predetermined that he was hacking there. Vladimir Guerrero, on at least one occasion, yeah. got a base hit on a ball that bounced. You never know what you're going to see when you come to the old ball yard. It's like a tennis player when the ball gets hit and tight to their feet and they just kind of chop it. Kind of like, yeah, like half volley kind of swing. One and one on Todd Frazier. Second inning, nothing, nothing. Well, he's sticking with his team. Series is far from over. Don't panic. Back to Chicago tomorrow night. Blues and Blackhawks. Strike called one and two. And we want to send out congrats to Vinny and Jenny Smolek on the birth of their daughter, Rosalie. Pitch. What a good slider. Boy, strike three. Off to a good start. Three of the first outs recorded via the strikeout. Hamilton to chase a slider in. Cop Bruce looking at a changeup, and now Frazier going way out of the zone to try to make contact with this slide ball. Ludwig cranks one toward deep left center, and it's going to bang off the wall. Well, they had a shot at him in second, but Bonifacio just couldn't handle it cleanly. And it will be a double for Ryan Ludwig. That's kind of ball if you're a hitter and you whack one off the wall like that. You think you've got to get two bases, but if this is handled cleanly by Bonifacio, they're likely going to throw him out at second base because it got out there in a hurry, and Ludwig, not a real speedy guy. There's the little bobble. Ludwig you know, doesn't run particularly well, and he's nicked up a little bit right now. We'll bring up Mezzarocco, two doubles yesterday. Eight games since he came off the DL, he has hits in all of those contests. Started on the shelf with a strained oblique. Curveball low and away. You know, Red span. Enjoying Wrigley Field. Well, got himself a souvenir bat. Life is good. Hard hit grounder to Castro. Scoops it up and throws to Rizzo for the out. Two down. Get your tickets to the party of the century all season long. The Cubs continue to celebrate the tens decade this homestand with music, food, and giveaways from that era. Visit WrigleyField100.com for more information about the 1910s, including fun facts. I love fun facts and rare photos. The D-backs come in tomorrow for the first of four. Get your tickets at Cubs.com today. If you can't make it out on a Wednesday afternoon, we'll have the pregame coverage at 12.30 on WGN. And get here early if you are coming that day. A lot going on. Packers and the Feds. One strike to Zach Kozart. A lot of bad blood between the Packers and the Feds. Gets by Castillo and allows Ludwig to advance to third. Goes as a wild pitch. Noiva trying to throw that change up down and away again and just held on to it a little too long.
these clubs have been playing since 1890. And the Cubs are four games better than the Reds. 1,106 to 1,102. Did you go back through all the game logs and yeah, add that up? Yeah, I did. It took me all night long, but I thought it was worth it to get that fun fact out there. Ground ball, and it's snagged by the pitcher, Villanueva. Red strand a man at third. We're scoreless after an inning and a half. Here's how you do it. You log on to WGNTV.com. Do it now. Click on the WGN Sports Game Zone banner to connect to all the up-to-the-minute stats and information while you're watching from home. Game Zone is sponsored by The Great Escape. Pools, patio sets, play sets, hot tubs, and more. Bottom two. Baseman Mike Olt. First pitch bounces his counterpart, Frazier. Edwin Jackson yesterday had a three pitch inning, which doesn't happen very often. Yeah, and he had a three pitch inning that started with a base hit. Bunt base hit by uh, Hamilton, and then Joey Votto bounced in a double play. and. Brandon Phillips grounded back to the mound. Three pitches, three outs. Edwin was telling me he had a four pitch appearance in the world in the uh, All Star game back in 09. Oh, usually. You almost to, don't want to uh, have that, right? Yeah, because well, you want the guy, you know, the announcers to talk about you. Yeah. Yeah, in the All Star game, you want to milk it a little bit, I would think. Well, you put the over under on Wellington Castillo homers at 15 and he's a fifth of the way there. Yeah. yeah. Although you did it yesterday. You didn't do it before opening day. Just thought I'd point that out. I think out. I might have. I don't know. Oh, oh maybe I think, you I think, I'll yeah, give you the I, think I think I've uh, fired that out there a couple of times okay. now. Like video yeah. proof two and one. Yeah. <laughs> we might have to go back and review <laughs> some game tapes. <laughs> or game whatever's. Elvis slash Andy Kaufman combo. Nice. We're going to get the conspiracy theory started by dropping <laughs> those two names. Way to go. Three and one on the Cubs catcher. Three and two. We don't have to get into all the details about the mechanics, but I know you talked with 
Bill Miller and Mike Brumley just about some tweaks. Yeah, he's yeah, yeah. Just uh, trying to. You know, the one thing they worked on with Wellington this spring was to get him to um, plant on his front foot, uh, flat front foot, as opposed to on the toe, which is what he used to do. He but, strikes out, but the end result is he's staying through the ball better. Um, that staying in the strike zone longer. You see that big high finish. He had 15 home runs in AAA a few years back, and not that many at bat. So you know, he has legitimate power, and I think he's kind of figuring that out. And typically, you know, most hitters, 1,000, 1,500 big league at bats before you kind of become a finished product. He's got a chance to be, you know, he's already a good defensive catcher. I think he's got a chance to be one of the better offensive catchers in the league as well. Not that Darwin Barney is a home run hitter. Yesterday, his first since August 24th of last year, but he was in need of pretty positive uh, performance, and he had one. You mentioned the double play he started on defense and then pitched in on offense with the home run. He's been about a halftime player so far. So just over 50% of the Cubs first 17 games. One ball and two strikes. A pitcher Villanueva on deck in the dirt. Two and two. They got a 3 1 fastball. Yanked it into the seats. And that was big because the Reds just scored a couple of runs in the top half of the inning to pull within one. Swing and a miss to end the inning. Through two here on a gorgeous Easter Sunday scoreless. Your focus on Wrigley, and the best part about this is that uh, we get to listen to the great Dutch rock band Focus, the great instrumental Focus Focus. So what is this? That's the question. It's an R. I'm going to go with R. It, it is an R. But we need a little more information, and you can tweet us at Len and JD. Give us your best guess. We have not been told what it is. Today's game brought to you by the letter R. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. Homer Bailey 
Sends one down the right field line out of play. Hmm. What you got? <laughs> Not that. So what are the ground rules here? Is this R, are all the things that are going to be part of this deal uh, in the ballpark? Could they be across the street or, or in the neighborhood? Part of Wrigley Field, we'll call it. Swing and a miss, strike three. The Chicago Cubs baseball summer camps offer kids 5 to 13 of all abilities the ultimate major league experience for six one week sessions in various Chicago locations. Join fellow teammates for a week of top notch baseball instruction exclusive access and unforgettable moments. It's Cubs.com slash camps to sign up your future Cub. Always love seeing young baseball fans here at the ballpark. Change up, fouled at the plate, one and one on Hamilton. Real good command of the secondary pitches so far for Carlos. Breaking ball, the change up, been very good, both the curve and the slider. Chewed up Hamilton first time. Reds would be thrilled if Hamilton could give them about a you know, 330 on base percentage from the top of their batting order. You'd like to get more out of that position, but frankly, not many do. There's only a handful of guys in the leadoff spot in Major League Baseball last year who fashioned a 350 or higher on base percentage. They had the best, Chu Sinsu Chu, in terms of on base. He's outstanding. This guy's game is all about his speed. Well, we're telling you what it's not. It's not that R, the Rawlings logo. But we're told there is a hint on there. There's a hint on the glove. Okay. Now ball to first. Rizzo's got to be wait, Don't wait, don't wait. Fastest guy in the game, yep. and he just beat out a ground ball to first. Uh, you just have to anticipate and go. You cannot think. Generally, in this game, you want to anticipate any possible scenarios, but if you stop to consider what you may do, and Hamilton's going down the line, you're going to lose that battle. I mean, you almost have to catch that ball moving forward so you have some momentum and just beat him in the foot race to the bag. Just he just he plays the game at such a fast speed. He just changes the dynamics for everybody on the field. No such thing as routine play at all. And, you know if Carlos goes straight to the bag as hard as he can. He may get the out that way. It looked like Carlos assumed uh, as, as Rizzo started to run that Anthony was going to take it himself. So he broke it down. So maybe a little culpability on both parts there. I know what the uh, the R is, by the way. Okay. But I guess I guessed off the air. Well, I mean, I'm good if you want to fire it out there. Unless we want to give our viewers uh, more time to play well, along. At this point, before the end of the inning, I'll give you what <laughs> I think it is. Okay. How about that? All right. There he goes. 
Bottle waved at it. Got him. Oh, Safe my. at second. And we may see the manager head out. Here he comes. Yeah, Carlos Scott's being away by us. Walking towards the Cubs dugout. First signaling, now walking. Saying, I think we need to look at this, Skip. Rick Renteria is going to make his way out there. They'll review it uh, in the uh, clubhouse and then determine whether they're going to challenge or not. Boy, good throw. Ooh, yeah. The throw was ahead of him. The question is, Where did he tag did, he get, did he get the tag applied before the foot got the bag? I don't know if he did. I don't know if he did either. I don't know if it's worth a challenge. Great throw, though. And the original call was safe. Right. It's going to be very difficult yeah, to overturn. I don't, I, don't think, I don't think it's worth the challenge. That was the. I mean, when you're on the field, you're going to understand why being away, but one, he's got a vested interest in this being out because he's the pitcher. And Joey Votto's in the batter's box, but the timing of it leads you to believe he's going to be out. And the throw got there in good shape. Nice pick by Castro, but Hamilton able to get to the bag right before the tag was applied. I think the call was right, and certainly not one that they would overturn. Ball strike 0 and 2. Opposing base dealers now 19 for 20. Running against the Cubs. So really, I, I would think, J.D., difficult for a pitcher, even if you tell yourself, not to let Hamilton bother you to, to not get distracted. Right. Yeah. It's, I mean, even in this situation, he's already in scoring position. There's a left handed hitter in the box. You would think that's not a running situation, but with him, everything's a running situation. Yep. And, you know, you want to give your catcher a fighting chance. But what you have to do as a pitcher is you just can't be 50 50. You know, you, you check them, you do. Whatever you do, you need to do to stop his secondary lead to make sure he stops. And then at that point, everything, all the focus goes back to the hitter. And Bato strikes out. An awkward looking swing at that pitch. It's five punch outs already for being a waiver. Yeah, he's, you know, a real craftsman. When he's on his game, he's fun to watch pitch because he really sets up hitters. He's thrown a lot of soft stuff already in this game. Votto protecting against a change up away or something soft. He, he just a little emergency hack on a good fastball in. The fastball is Carlos's change of pace because it gives you a lot of slow stuff and then slips 87 or 88 by you. I guess it's, 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 it's his increase in pace. Soft, 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 and then sneaks the heater in, in on you. Ball one on Phillips. Pop to first in the opening inning. And still sorting through the details, but looked like a pretty nasty brawl in Pittsburgh between the Brewers and the Pirates on a Carlos Gomez triple. Play at third? Is that where it started? I think so, yeah. Some jawing occurred. There was a, a bat flip by Gomez who may have thought it was a home run. He we'll take a look at it during the break. He gets under people's skin. He does. Terrific player. Yeah. 
And he went to make it one and two. Finding the shade today. Yeah, there's a change. It's comfortable no matter where you are this afternoon. <laughs> Fouled off out of play. Happy 24th birthday to Martha Rodriguez it's from your brother Saul who sent us a nice tweet. Swung on and missed and the inning is over. Again, uh, give us your tweets. A few people have gotten it correct on what that is. All right, focus on Wrigley. That is that little R you see next to a lot of logos. That means it's a registered logo, and the actual shot is right outside the uh, the ticket office. That's at the corner of Clark and Addison. So you probably walked by that Cub logo a million times. But that's exactly what it is. Is Villanueva swings at the first pitch and bounces to the shortstop, Zach Cozart. So we had some fun with that, and uh, we did have several. Tweeters I'll come up with the correct answer, although the R does stand for registered, not restricted, or what else did I see? But they essentially got it right. Yeah. The copyright R. Where's Waldo? There's Bonifacio. Sinker is too low. Now both these starting pitchers coming off very rough outings, but so far scoreless baseball here today. Homer Bailey's been really good here at Wrigley Field in his career, four and one with a 2.95 ERA. It's a sign from Mezzarocco. Here it comes on a 1 1, and Bonifacio takes it 2 and 1. 
That is a very strange line. A lot of homers, no walks, nine strikeouts. Yeah, yeah. Nine punch outs at five innings without walking anybody, you would assume those other numbers would be good. So Bailey's first no hitter was in Pittsburgh on the 28th of September in 2012. He then followed that up on July 2nd of last season against the Giants, and it was the first no hitter since his other one. So if you ever find a list of all time no hitters, you'll find his back to back on the MLB list, even though obviously they were not in back to back starts. Like Johnny Vandermeer. Ball four, he walked him. First one he's given up today, and make sure you check out our WGN Baseball blog. It's sponsored by Jeff Vukovic, your nationwide insurance agent, serving the area for 36 years. To join up, contact Jeff at jeffvuk.com. Nationwide is on your side. Game notes, a link to all things related to Wrigley 100. Including 98 years ago today was the Cubs' first ever game in this ballpark. Again, they're coming out on Wednesday. Get here early. They're going to have cupcakes. They're going to have the, the replica jerseys that they will hand out while supplies last. I think it's the first 30,000. We'll have it for you on WGN starting at 1230 for our pregame coverage. <laughs> Let's go back to the 19. 16. Chicago Cubs. Finished 67 and 86 managed by. Joe Tinker. We honor Joe Tinker on Friday. That was uh, that was a hitter's park, according to uh, baseball references. Park factor. Anything over a hundred means uh, a hitter's park, and uh, that year it was 116. That's really high. And it was called Weekman Park at the time. Cy Williams led the club with 12 home runs. Still in what would be considered the dead ball era of baseball. Heine Zimmerman had a nice year. You might remember him. He's on the all body part team. On a Fascio takes off for second. He is safe. I love this new dynamic in baseball. Uh, Homer Bailey, as soon as the call was made at second base, looking into the dugout, seeing if he was going to get any help on appeal. Brian Price slowly working his way out of the dugout and gonna take some time and maybe challenge it. It's a delayed steal by Bonifacio. Again, very close. Play along at home. What do you think? Safe or out? Can't tell. No, they're going to review it. He's, he's going to use his challenge. And Price asking. Well, I haven't seen a look at it that would convince me to overturn it. I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit surprised. But. Can't tell exactly when his foot makes contact with the yeah. bag, right? So it's hard. To, it would be hard. If you're asking me to guess. So I think they had him. But if you're asking me to say conclusively, am I convinced yeah. they had him? No. They get a cleaner look than that. They might be able to overturn it. That's probably the best look they're going to get. Yeah. yeah, he looks out there. But again, it's, boy, it's really tough to tell. And 
if the Reds win this challenge, of course, Brian Price will keep his challenge if he loses it. And he's out of them. Then can request for a replay once we get into the uh, late innings. But yeah, well, he'll keep his challenge. He's out. Just the second time this year that Bonifacio has been caught. Yeah, it's just it's hard to know exactly what they're determining as clear evidence. I mean, because I think we both agree that he looked out there. I guess that was enough. Meanwhile, one and two on Sweeney. And that pitch hit him. And also got a good piece of uh, the catcher, Mezzarocco, but he doesn't get to take first base. That was a split, I think, right, right off the split. toe. Back got the exposed uh, left wrist of Mezzarocco. Sweeney on for Rizzo singled in his first at bat. Pitch in on the hands and fought off foul. Uh, clearly, they're trying to tie Rizzo up inside. A little blue base hit he got first time up was on a fastball in on his hands. Try to force him to be quick to get that inside fastball, and then if they sense he's trying to speed up a little bit, they'll come with that splitter. Past. We've seen Bailey rush it up there 96 97 miles an hour he hasn't really had that kind of life on his heater this afternoon. Sure holds on deck two and two on Rizzo. Her wind was blowing out of the southwest has pretty much died down. It's a very calm day at the moment. I don't know if this park ever necessarily plays neutral. I think when the wind blows in, it obviously favors the pitchers. When it blows out, it favors the hitters. When it's calm like this, I think it slightly favors the hitters. It's 368. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a very cozy. Very friendly for Three, the hitters. Two foul. And it used to be one of the things that would mitigate that a little bit was the infield grass was so thick and so high that ground balls would just get chewed up in that. Not the case anymore. Not like it used to be anyway. The 3 2 is Sweeney running, and that's ball four. Two walks and a hit batter in the inning. Come on out, celebrate Wrigley Field's official 100th birthday this Wednesday, April 23rd at 120. The Chicago Federals will duel it out against the Kansas City Packers. They'll don their 1914 Federal League unis. As part of the birthday celebration, the first 30,000 fans get a replica Shifez jersey. The first 10,000 get a birthday cupcake from Vincent Jewel Osco. 
Special pregame ceremony. Many Cup greats will be here, so plan to arrive early. Tickets are still available at Cubs.com. No hits in the inning, but the Cubs with three base runners. One of those was caught stealing on a replay review. That was Bonifacio. Sweeney then was hit by a pitch. Rizzo walked. Well, Bailey having given up four home runs last time he pitched and no walks. Maybe a little more discerning here. Second time through the Cub lineup. Doesn't want to be quite as aggressive with his fastball, perhaps, as he was in that start. He got Sheerholtz back in the first, struck him out on a split finger pitch. One and two on Sherholtz. Cubs try to grab the lead here in the third. Paused by Bailey before the pitch. And he strikes him out for the second time. It'll take us to the fourth. Nothing, nothing. And as we mentioned, things got a little uh, tense in Pittsburgh. The Brewers and the Pirates. Carlos Gomez with a triple. You see a little bat flip there. Garrett Cole on the mound. Apparently did not appreciate it. Uh, yeah, the, the, bat the bat flip and then watching it as he ran down the line. This is, Cole uh, took umbrage. This is a legit fight here. Yeah. Not sure who that is who knocked uh, Gomez down. Might have been Travis Snyder because I think he got he was one of the guys that got ejected. There will be suspensions for sure. See the Pirates wearing those throwback unis. Uh, throwback mode. Uh, the Garrett Cole looked like big Don Robinson there. Pirates lead that game one nothing in the bottom of the sixth. Two and one the count on Jay Bruce. See, really the best way to address that if you're Garrett Cole is not to say anything to Gomez when he's standing there at third base. It's just bow time is next time up. I mean, 
and, and so much talk in the game about you know showing people up and playing the game with respect. Gomez is one of those guys that's always been accused of. You know, he's got a little hot dog in him. And talking with Dale Swaim about him, Dale was with him over in Milwaukee. Dale loved the kid. He's a really good kid. Sometimes guys just don't get it. And Carlos is one of those guys. Doesn't understand that his actions might create a little bit of an issue. Call strike three. Man, how good is he today? Cubs baseball is brought to you by Budweiser, the official beer of Major League Baseball. Great times are waiting. Grab some buds. Goes good with jelly beans. I like the black ones. That's seven strikeouts for Villanueva. He's one off his career high of eight. That's a guessing game for the Red hit, Reds hitters here this afternoon because he's got command of all of his pitches. No idea what's coming their way. In tight. Mentioned his numbers as a starter last year. One and seven with a 450. But, you know, he averaged six innings per start. Pitching to a four and a half ERA as a fifth starter, most clubs would take that. Didn't show up in the win loss column. A lot of quality starts early for Carlos last year. is 2-1 ground ball in the left four base hit. First hit of the series for Frazier. Now one out of nine. Wrigleyville rooftops has premier seating for up to 200 guests for corporate gatherings family reunions and bachelor or bachelorette parties individual and group tickets are available for all games for details. Go to Wrigleyville rooftops dot com or call seven seven three two four eight. Roof. Ryan Ludwig with a double, stranded at third in the second inning. Certainly a double play candidate if Carlos can get a ground ball here. Get him to roll over, maybe on a breaking ball. Ball one on Ludwig. Struggling Bronson Arroyo and Travis Wood tomorrow night. Struggling Brandon McCarthy and Jason Hamill Tuesday night. Swing and a miss. We'll have the day games for you. The big one Wednesday. And then Thursday afternoon as well on WGN. Anniversary game Wade Miley a left hander against Jeff Samarja. Diamondbacks starting pitchers. Collectively 3 and 13 with a 750 earned run average by far the worst in the league. Trevor Cahill. Bullpen out of the rotation. Randall Delgado same thing. Well, Patrick Corbin their ace. Tommy John surgery. It's 2 and 1 on Ludwig. Two and two.
outfield pop up. Handled by Rizzo. Two away, it'll bring up the catcher, Mezzarocco. I showed you footage of the uh, Jim Maloney 10 inning no hitter for the Reds here at Wrigley Field back in the 60s. May 2nd, 1917, Fred Tony, first visiting player to uh, throw a no hitter here. He was the winner. It's the only double no hitter in Major League Baseball history. Hippo Vaughn allowed no hits through nine innings as well. And Hippo gave it up in the uh, in the tenth. And Fred, Fred Tony. Tony. Reds broke up the no hitter. Uh, got a run in the tenth. Tony finished off the Cubs. And for a long time, Major League Baseball recognized Hippo Vaughn's no hitter as such, but then they changed the rules. Yeah. Yep. That one clubbed into the corner and left. <laughs> Frazier coming around third, and he's going to score. Devin Mezzarocco. I think you used the word lurking down in that seven spot in their lineup, and he's been their best hitter here the last week or so, and the Reds lead 1 0. Yeah, came in hitting 500 into the series. Dropped off a little bit, but you obviously you can't sustain that. But he just continues to have one good at bat after another. And a rare mistake there for Carlos. His location has been spot on here this afternoon. Sweeney got to that ball in a nice shape, but as he tried to make the throw in, he's bouncing off the wall, so couldn't get a whole lot on it. So Frazier able to come all the way around from first and scores the first run. There's Cozart. Another Fred Tony note, uh, courtesy baseball reference. Uh, May 10th, 1909, he was pitching in the Bluegrass League for the Winchester Hustlers against the Lexington Colts. He struck out 19, walked one before Winchester scored on a squeeze play in the bottom of the 17th. About that. Wow. 17 inning no hitter. That one deep. And off the wall. He just missed a home run. Cozart's going to pick up a double as he knocks in Mezzarocco. And it's two to nothing. Barely missed the basket. And again, that ball, the changeup stays up a little bit. Out of third, but up in the zone. And Cozart able to go out there and lean on it. Whack it off the wall back to back doubles two runs in for the Reds this Reds lineup you know they had been swinging it well prior to yesterday and they did do some damage late in the game yesterday. They just depth to their lineup you know Cozart not a great hitter but he's got pop and as really coming into his own now. Well in case you didn't save the paper. Uh, from that day. A couple of Bengals. Bengals were singles. Record. Let's say 3,000 or more fans. Hippo Vaughn was 6'4, 215. That's, that's not a hippo, just a big, strong guy. Homer Bailey would have fit back then with that yeah, name. Yeah. But he had a nickname. Not a hippo. One one. Fouled off one and two. Jim Thorpe. Hold in the only run. 
One of the greatest athletes of all time. 77 games with the Reds. 1917 split the year between the Giants and the Reds. Bailey not an automatic out. Very late swing roll foul passed first. The slider that backed up on. Carlos just kept running in on Bailey. Not the best of swings, but he's just trying to stay alive here. 1912 Olympics, King Gustav the fifth. Sweden said, "You sir are the greatest athlete in the world." Jim responded, "Thanks, King." <laughs> Was the uh, founding president of the National Football League? Well, what, a, what a story, yeah. Jim Thorpe. Olympic Hall of Fame, Pro Football Hall of Fame, College Football Hall of Fame. Carlisle, Pennsylvania, Is that home, I believe. Yeah. Bailey putting up a fight here. There's a base hit, as you said, he's not an automatic out, and he just knocked in another run. Three consecutive two out run scoring hits for the Reds off Villanueva. And it's three nothing. And it's not like Carlos got careless with Bailey. He was pitching him like a legitimate hitter. I believe that was a changeup. Trying to throw that outer outside corner changeup to the right handed hitter. And again, it just stayed up a little bit. And Bailey able to drive one in in support of himself. So things going awry here for Carlos, who'd been so good. Threw one out here in the fourth. Getting ambushed by the bottom of the Reds order. Strike called. Seven, eight, nine hitters all knocking in runs here in the fourth inning. That's a strike throw to first. Oh, they almost got the pitcher. A sneak attack behind that left handed batter by Castillo. Desperate times call for desperate measures. You never want to see your pitcher going head first into a base, but if he doesn't, he's probably out. Be beating the ball off of his feet. No, those are his money makers. Wellington Castillo's 
pretty much a wall behind home plate. Joey Votto just chilling. Hanging on that uh, ledge. Down in front. Excuse me, 1 9. We're trying to watch a ball game here. Back to the pitcher Villanueva, and the inning finally comes to an end, but the Reds get three to take the lead. Bone and Joint Institute as Aroldis Chapman, the closer for the Reds, throwing in the bullpen uh, earlier today, the third time he's been in the pen and live batting practice not too far off in the distance. Took that line drive off the bat of Salvador Perez. In spring training, suffered fractures of his eye, nose, and also got a mild concussion. Illinois Bone and Joint Institute helping you move better so you could live better. Visit IBJI.com. And in terms of the Cubs injury report, we mentioned Jake Arietta, another rehab outing tomorrow at AAA Iowa. Javier Baez off the seven day DL today had a sprained left ankle. He's the DH, and so far against Round Rock, he's gone 0 for 3. Great to see Sergeant First Class Miguel Yoriostegi. Currently serving with the 85th Support Command. His friends call him I Chart. A nice hand here. Today's military recognition. Yoriostegi. Two strikes on Starlin Castro. Cubs trail 3 0. The Reds have won Bailey's last nine starts against the Cubs, and he's always fared well in this ballpark. ERA of 2.95 coming in. Well, show me up and in fastball. He's had Castro willing to go out of the zone last time up. Starlin popped up on a ball that bounced before he made contact with it. Another he one. got him. He's just not seeing the ball well at all today. You could claim he saw the ball really well in his last at bat. Yeah, if he could hit it on the bounce. Maybe seeing it, he's just not recognizing yeah. what it's going to do.
up in there. Piece of equipment came off. Towering pop up behind the plate. Mezzarocco has room. Two gone. MLB.tv Premium, the number one live streaming sports service, is celebrating 12 years. Join the millions of subscribers. Watch every out of market game live in true HD on over 400 devices. Visit Cubs.com for details. Bailey wobbly with his command last inning, got away with it. A couple of walks and a hit batsman, but the Cubs couldn't do anything with it. So far, two quick outs here. Punch out pop up. Wellington trying to make him work a little bit, taking all the way there. Steele got off to a slow start this year. Lately, he's been picking it up. In the right for a base hit. The Reds got it done at the bottom of their order. Cubs can do that here with two outs and Darwin Barney coming up. Fights off that fastball moving in on him. Solid line drive single. Ball strike. Fastball at 93. Important at bat here for Darwin, even if he can't do some damage, just to keep the line moving, get the wave up there, and at least clear his spot in the batting order. That's not going to happen, I don't believe. Brandon Phillips will make the grab, and the inning is over. After four, it's the Reds three and the Cubs nothing. It's brought to you by Budweiser, the official beer of Major League Baseball. Great times are waiting. Grab some buds. Todd Protzman Davis will conduct the stretch, the great grandson of Zachary Taylor Davis, who was the original architect of this ballpark. 
Designed Wiegman Park for the Chicago Whales. Also the architect of Comiskey Park. Mount Carmel High School. St. Ambrose. Known as the Frank Lloyd Wright of baseball. Fifth inning underway. Great inspiration to George Costanza. Well, Carlos due to lead off first in the bottom of the fifth, so this may be his last inning of work. Pretty good, though. I mean, a bunch of pars until that uh, triple bogey in the fourth. He's really been going along nicely. Beat Votto last time. A bad hack at an inside fastball. Uh, we should point out that Jim Thorpe was from Oklahoma originally. Why do I link him to Carlisle? Uh, because I think he ended up at a, a boarding school there. Oh, okay. Complicated history of his youth, but uh, Native American. I remember, I had a book when I was a kid. This big book, it was like the greatest athletes of the first half of the 20th century, or something like that. Thorpe was you know, Thorpe and Ruth, and all those characters. As we were saying earlier. She just started this at bat three and two. Fouled away. Probably a trade Carlos would take. I don't know that Joey Votto would take it because he wants to see those pitches. Try to get into the, the head of the pitcher and see where he ultimately is going to go with his 3 2 pitch. Two really smart competitors here. Was one of those guys as a pitcher. Sometimes you're thinking is well, whatever I think I, I should throw him here. Whatever I normally would do, I probably should do the opposite because he's probably thinking right along with me. You see Vado on television, you don't realize how big he is. Big, broad-shouldered yeah, guy. Right. Fly ball to left. That's Ryan Sweeney with the sunglasses on. Yeah, the Cubs encourage the use of public transportation as you make your way to and from Wrigley Field. You could try riding your bike. There's a courtesy bike check located near the corner of Clark and Waveland. And for drivers, the Cubs provide free parking and shuttle services on night and weekend games from 3900 North Rockwell. For details, visit Cubs.com. Phillips swings away. And that's lofted out to Bonifacio for the second out. His expos are in the house. I saw a list. I wish I could remember where. Somewhere on the internet. Best uh, sports logos. And that made the top ten. And I'd have to agree. Mostly because it's defunct, right? Isn't it nostalgia for old yeah, logo? Right? I, I think, I think so. I mean, if they were still up there, yeah. I mean, it's it's a cool logo. 
Well, it, if the gentleman would sit back in his chair, um, you would see that it's kind of a fancy looking M with uh, red, white, and blue. And you can make out an E and a B, Montreal Expos oh, baseball. Oh, yeah. There it is. Yeah. Uh, I always thought it kind of looked like a, a weird hat. Mm -hmm. You could make a lot of different things out of it. And then underneath that, with their main logo back in the day, it was the typewriter font, small K or lowercase Expos, which also kind of didn't really fit, but it, that's what made it fun, I guess. I, uh, they got their name from the uh, World's Fair 1967, Expo 67. Was in Montreal. Expo started plays an expansion club in 1969. Well, quick pitch and Bruce hammers that ball out into right center. And he's got a double. He and Nueva tried to ambush him there and it didn't work. Bruce had struck out his first two times up, but you see he was ready to hit. And despite the quick pitch by Villanueva, he goes down and gets that off speed pitch for a two out double. That's the fourth double for the Reds this afternoon. There's the trademark logo, TM. I mean, just look at the shape, you know, of the logo and then expos. You know, we pounded it out on a typewriter. You can tell we miss them, can't you? <laughs> Waxing nostalgic about the expos here. Fly ball well hit deep left center Bonifacio back it's off the wall for Frazier he's got a double and it's now four to nothing it's raining two baggers here for the Reds five today four in the last two innings and the way Carlos started this inning with two quick outs I thought well maybe he will take the at bat in the bottom half of the fifth and stay in there but after this I'm guessing they'll Need to hit for him. Cubs down four now. Yeah, they're going to get some action going in the pen. Lester Strode getting the troops in action. Wesley Wright will grab a ball. All the runs, two out runs for the Reds here the last couple of innings. Strike called on Ludwig. That Wrigley Field 100 logo. There you go, Cubs and Reds, the old school wishbone C for the Cubs. <laughs> oh, and two. And a final today from Cleveland. Josh Outman was an out man. He improved to three and zero oh as the Indians beat the Blue Jays six to four. So Cleveland avoids the sweep. You're in the market for a shortstop. Alex Gonzalez could be had. The Tigers released their opening day shortstop yesterday. I saw John Morosi tweeted that he'll get his 1.1 million from the Tigers this year, even though he played in nine games. It's a pretty good hourly wage. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Fouled off. Still one and two.
not to pick on Ryan Ludwig he is far from the only guy to do it but this is one thing MLB tried to get guys to to not do. Yeah it's just bad, long bad, walks yeah, pace, between pitches pace of play is, is a real issue in the game. They got to find a way to speed guys up. You, you just can't ask them to do it. You have to start enforcing some rules. Keep guys in the batter's box make pitchers throw the ball. Two two. Fouled out of play. Roll around, fix the glove, just do a little squat. The end of wave is ready. I'm morally safer. <laughs> two, two. I do a uh, weekly uh, bit in the Daily Herald. I have some thoughts on that tomorrow morning. Oh. So uh, check it out. Yeah, I, you know, you're right. Uh, players and managers do not respond to suggestions. You need, unfortunately, I believe, more rules. A run in, a 2 2 count on Ludwig. See Frazier out there at second. He just knocked in that tally. Yeah. They get another. Frazier around third. Here comes the throw by Sweeney. Not in time. 5 0. It's been a tale of two games for Carlos Villanueva. First three innings and then the last two. His red hitters able to make adjustments seeing Carlos for the second and now third time through the batting order. Ludwig going down to get that fastball out of way and pitching change time. Of well, a double switch here, five nothing Cincinnati will be back. The Cubs in the bottom of the fifth and the ninth spot. The pitcher will go into the eighth slot in the order. And it's Wesley Wright. Better left hander, no wins, no losses through five appearances. He's pitched to a 4.15 earned run average. He's got right handed hitters scheduled here in the fifth, but the idea is here to finish off the fifth and then go into the sixth. And Hamilton a switch hitter Votto from the left side Bruce in the four holes left handed I'm guessing that's the thinking my Wesley Wright is getting the call here the double switch with Valbuena in the nine hole in the batting order. The 
pitch to Mezzarocco's hit foul out of play into the upper deck. Marlins just swept the Mariners in Miami. 3 2 the final today. So Seattle has dropped six straight. Maybe that's why Wesley Wright got the call. Those splits on Mezzarocco. That's the book on him from last year. I'm going to find out, by golly. The Marlins club could pitch a little bit. Giancarlo Stanton's off to a good start. Ground ball in the left. Hit parade continues for the Reds. Eight hits their last two innings. Now, last year, Mesoraco hit 321 off lefties and just 212 off right handers. And that's a much bigger sample, so it's more indicative of what you would expect from him going forward. Jose Veras is now up in the Cubs' bullpen. Last two innings, the Reds have seven two out hits. Cozart's knocked in three this weekend. Pirates now lead the Brewers 2 1. They're in the top of the ninth. They got a run on the bottom of the eighth on a Jose Tabata infield RBI single. High fly to center. Bonifacio was frozen for a moment. Now drifts back and makes a catch, and the inning is over. They add two to their lead. It's now 5 zip in the fifth. Ford upcoming schedule the Diamondbacks and Packers I guess all wrapped into one uh, come in for a four game series starting tomorrow night we'll have the big anniversary game on Wednesday Wrigley 100 it opened on that date April 23rd 1914 Ford go further in any one of Ford's many fuel efficient vehicles check out America's freshest lineup at your local Ford store or at local Ford stores. Dot com. Uh, 
probably could make out beneath that promo. Bob Dylan's classic song Hurricane about Reuben Hurricane Carter who has passed away at age 76. Wrongfully convicted of murder. And the topic of that song and the 1999 movie starring Denzel Washington. years in prison. Freed in 1985. Breaking ball low and outside Bailey now with a five run cushion. Buena cranks one way foul. 68 pitches made uh, by Bailey to this point in the ball game. And yesterday, Tony Sagrani was the starter for the Reds. He lasted five innings. Cubs had a lot of good at bats against him early. He struggled with command, walked four. So pitch count got to be an issue for him. That and the fact that he was down three. So an early move to the bullpen yesterday for Brian Price. Not likely to be the case here this afternoon as Homer Bailey now pitching with a comfortable five run lead. Rallying cry in the Cubs dugout will be hey, a lot of time left, just have good at bats. A couple of knocks, someone pops one out of here, and we're back in the ball game. That ball, I think, might have hit Johnny Cueto on the back of the head in the dugout. Hit somebody. Pinballed around down there. The old ugly finder. Well, if it's going to hit anybody in the back of the head, I guess Johnny with all that <laughs> hair he's got working. <laughs> you see him smiling. That's dangerous. Not a whole lot of room to run and hide in the dugout. Pretty tight quarters. Full count three and two on Valbuena. Bonifacio on deck. Here comes another foul. Ryan Braun goes deep off Jason Grilly, and it's 2 2 in the ninth in Pittsburgh. Down to the tenth in New York, where the Mets and Braves are tied at three-three. Ball four. Good start. I'm surprised it's Balbuena working the walk. Fazio likes to try that little slug bunt where he runs up as if to bunt and then tries to punch the ball on the ground. So far, it hasn't worked for him. Drag bunt wouldn't be a bad play here with the cut with the Reds rather playing for two in the middle. Botto holding the runner on at first, of course. Phillips shading towards the bag. So he could drag one past Bailey, give himself a base hit. Popped into short right. And Phillips now able to make the play as Bruce was in the area. The Reds have been banging out all these extra base hits. The Cubs with just three bingles here today. Started well Bonifacio and Rizzo in the first had a couple of knocks only one since then Castillo last inning. Sharply hit single into right or bingo as you said by uh, Ryan Sweeney. 
two on one out for Rizzo. Singles were bingles and extra base hits were long hits. Cubs could use a, an extra long hit here from Rizzo. Tighten things up. swinney has been scuffling and has to feel awfully good. Still have not had a guy pass second. That's where Valbuena is with Sweeney at first. And their spot, they begin hard in, up and in on Rizzo all afternoon. Very difficult to do anything with that pitch. Two and one. Sure holds on deck. Diamondbacks, we mentioned coming in tomorrow, they will the worst record in baseball. 5 and 15 today, starting their game against the Dodgers. Second, they're scoreless. Josh Colmenter and Josh Beckett in a battle of Josh's. Kick the 2 2, called strike three, and Rizzo is out. First time he's been retired today, single and walk, and this is just a perfect pitch. Back door slider or cut fastball right on the edge at the knees. Sometimes as a hitter, you just got to tip your hat. Day so far for Sherholtz. He's struck out both times swinging. Here's a pitch. Fastballs in and split finger pitches to Sherholtz here today, who came into this game with very good numbers against Bailey, but Bailey's had the upper hand so far this afternoon. Haven't gotten the power swing going at all yet. 222. Had a nice weekend last weekend in St. Louis, but it's dropped off since then. Ball in the center. Hamilton back now in to end it. Homer Bailey, best start of the year for him so far. He's got a 5 0 lead after five.
Summary and uh, all Reds here early on. It's not that early anymore. Sixth inning. Reds bottom of the order, knocking in all five of their runs. Tough day for Villanueva, who got off to a really good start. He struck out seven, but gave up five runs on nine hits. Start something special with great leases and low financing on a new Honda. Visit shophonda.com or visit your local Honda dealer. Yeah, with one out in the fourth, he'd given up nothing. He'd recorded seven strikeouts of the ten outs. Uh, just a couple of hits to that point, and then boom, boom, boom. Started raining doubles. One of those games as a pitcher, you go back home, and your head hits the pillow tonight, and you're laying there thinking, how'd that one get away from me? It's on top of my game. It happens. One and two. Wesley Wright actually was drafted by the Dodgers back in 03. Hey, hey, hey. The Chicago doubleheader. Cubs baseball and. Bulls playoff basketball. When you think about Wesley Wright, he's coming up with the Astros, and he made his debut with Houston in 08. And they took him from the Dodgers in the Rule 5 draft. With the Rays last year, Bailey with more good contact, and as he lines out to Rizzo. A big story around baseball yesterday: Bryce Harper benched for uh, a lack of hustle on this ground ball back to Lance Lynn. A the situation there, a little tapper back to the mound. You know you're going to be out. You don't have to put your head down and, and sprint 100 miles an hour down the line. But Matt Williams was frustrated that he peeled off and didn't run all the way to the base. Ironically, the game uh, <laughs> program. Promoting him as Mr. Hustle. Which he is. Generally. Mm -hmm. Tight one there in D.C. Hustle could be overrated. John Wooden said never mistake activity for achievement. Yeah. It's but probably a topic for another. Venue but. If Bryce Harper was shot out of a cannon on that ground ball back to Lance Lynn, he would have been out. Right. You know, and, and Matt Williams, I saw his comments and, and yeah. heard, listened to him last night. At, you know, when he met the press after the game, and he said, uh, he said, well, he said two things. He said that guy in Chicago has got a really cool beard, but he also said, you know, <laughs> he said, you know, with the transfer rule now, there's a legitimate baseball reason for running all the way down the line and touching the base. Because if the first baseman were to take the ball out of his glove and drop it, theoretically you can be safe. Now that's going to happen once in maybe a billion times. It well, I, yeah, it'll I, never happen. But. I, and I think the other thing is, did it happen before? Were there other things going on that this became the last straw? Because he had a couple of options. He could have had a conversation with Harper in the dugout, not pulled him. Could have pulled him. They could have said the quad tightened up. But he pulled him, and then after the game said. I pulled him because he didn't hustle. Right. And basically there was some reference to letting his teammates down right. too, right? Because his 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 spot came up in the ninth in a tight game. Yeah, his spot the final out of the game would have been his spot in the batting order. And I think you know, a lot of clubs have the policy just run through the bag. You know, a lot of times it's just the body language. A manager doesn't want to see his player convey that kind of I'm beaten down body language, whether it's peeling off on a play like that or slamming the, the helmet down in disgust. That's what you think about with Bryce Harper, yeah. but yeah, flying around the bases, flipping the helmet off, yeah. running into walls. You know, they're trying to back him off a little bit in, in some uh, instances. Last year he got hurt you know, trying to run through an outfield wall. Lined to Bonifacio. They get Hamilton. Yeah, on a ball that could sometimes be really problematic for a center fielder. He got a great jump. That line drive right at you sometimes 
It's tough to get a read on, but he was on the move immediately. Good contact, but two quick outs for the Reds here in the sixth. Caught the outside on a fastball to Votto. Yankees have put Ivan Nova on the disabled list. Elbow ligament tear. Those are three words you don't want in the same mm. sentence. Sam Fold, former Cub, claimed off waivers from the A's by the Twins. Guessing Tommy John surgery for Nova. They haven't announced that yet. Tear, you know, usually if you hear inflammation, you're hopefully here tear. That's bad news. Former Cup Kyle Farnsworth is the Mets' new closer. They're tied, by the way, 3 3 in the bottom of the 10th, hosting Atlanta today. Farnsworth, he's got to have about 15 years in, doesn't he? Oh, yeah. Scoreless inning for him today. This is Kyle Farnsworth's 16th year in the big leagues. Wow. Hey, guess what? It's a full count on Joey Way Votto. Up. Here we go. Phillips on deck. Probably foul this one off. Nope. That's what Wright wishes he had done. Tough weekend for Phillips, one out of ten. Carlos Villanueva fan club. Hits for the Reds. The Cubs have four. You know who you two. need on your club today? What's that? You know who you need on your club today? Who do you need on your club today? Luke Easter. <laughs> Rabbit Moranville. Yeah. Jamie Easterly. <laughs> Mike Lamb. And a miss on a change up to end the inning. Happy Easter, everybody. Baby, don't you Beautiful day in downtown go. Chicago. Come on.
Both teams still trying to find their footing here in the first three weeks of the season. The Reds three under, the Cubs six under 500 coming in. Slider misses on Starlin Castro. Bottom six, five zip Cincy. Tough day so far for Castro. He's been swinging a lot of bad pitches so far. Reds have not thrown him many fastballs in the strike zone this weekend. Off speed stuff, breaking balls away. He's been throwing that splitter down. He's been willing to chase it. There's a fastball for him. Did him a favor. And a good result. Get in there with a fastball, and you see Castro open up early and whack that one into center. He's got a leadoff walk last inning from Balbuena. Didn't blossom, but another chance here with this leadoff single. We've had a shifting wind today. We started out of the southwest, meaning pretty much straight out to center. Right now, if Mike Olt were to look up at the uh, flags, he probably would like what he sees, considering he's a pole power hitter. Right to left. Mm -hmm. Jumped on a first pitch yesterday and whacked his third home run of the year just inside the foul pole down the left field line. We'd love for you to tweet us your selfie, your Cubs selfies. Hashtag WGN Cubs. You ever had a fancy outfit like that when you were that? That is styling there. No, a fitted a suit right there. Rocking the bow tie and everything. Alt went around. That's strike three. It's number seven for Bailey. First out of the inning. Fly ball foul, first base side. Yankees and Rays are in extras. Top 10, 1 1. Mets and the Braves in New York have gone to the 11th. Detroit beat the Angels 2 to 1. That's a final. Porcello over Hector Santiago. Joe Nathan got his third save. Swing and a miss. Bailey now has struck out two in a row. He's got eight on the day. And now a pinch hitter Ryan Kalish or Wesley Wright. Good split. You see Jose Barris in the seventh. It's a fair ball. 
It's going to roll right past Barris through the Cubs bullpen. Castro to third. Gary Jones is going to hold him there, and he tells him get right back to the bag because Frazier was standing there. Pinch hit double. Ryan Kalish. Carves that high fastball the other way. They're playing him off the line, so no chance for Frazier to make a play on that ball. Gary Jones, you see him backpedaling as he reads the ball into the left field corner. Castro. Be careful not to take too big of a turn there at third base. Can't afford to make any mistakes on the bases when you're down five. Lefty Manny Parra up for the Reds. One of two lefties now that uh, Sean Marshall is healthy again. So the Cubs have a runner at third now for the first time today. And Valbuena pops it up. There may be room here for Cozart and Frazier, and it's Cozart in the bullpen to end the inning. We go to the seven five zip reds. Hey, that's tight. That young man. In a zone. Two more. This guy's on fire. He's auditioning for Blue Man Group. <laughs> Stop the clock. Jose Veras, first appearance. Since he was taken out of the closer's role, this is his first game in nine days. And a strike called on Jay Bruce. Get over splitter there to get things started. The number's not pretty for Jose. That's why he's been removed to save opportunities. Failed to convert both times. Walks have been an issue. Working in the pen, trying to straighten things out. Have not hit the ball out of the ballpark, but they really haven't needed to today. A lot of doubles. Fly ball to deep center. 
Bonifacio back, starting to run out of room, and it's gone in and out of the basket for Jay Bruce. It's his third of the year, and it's six to nothing. It's almost as if he took that comment about no home runs as a challenge. Though I doubt that he heard you. That's his third. Not much count on him to give you 30 plus. Barris' struggles continue. Pratsman Davis, great grandson of architect Zachary Taylor Davis, will conduct the stretch today. Brought to you by Budweiser. That's the curve. Went on, that's his best pitch. And very inconsistent with that offering as well here in the early going. Jose. Pitching this season at 33 years of age, first came up with the Yankees in 06. Talking yesterday or the day before, that I think only one other ball has gone into the booth. Swing and a miss, strike three. Well, who, who got it? I don't know. I just know we didn't. Really tell. Guy, you want me to see if he'll throw it up here? Hey, that's Len's ball. <laughs> hey, Len, Len had that. <laughs> hey, that's Len's ball. <laughs> Len's. Oh, he's not even listening. No, he's ignoring you. I'm not going to hear it. <laughs> Should have had it. Moment worth capturing. Yeah, um, Harry had the the fishnet. Um, although he would have had to hold it straight up to catch that screamer. Yeah, that had a little hair on it. Yeah, my hand's throbbing. But he got I'll work through it. <laughs> Any stitches on there? No, I can kind of see. I got it right there. So see, it was the heel. I, if I, you know, more in the palm, yeah. I would have been in good shape. Yeah. In. Give me an error. I'll take it. I deserve it. Too hot to handle. You knocked it down. Yeah. 
Sweeney in left makes the catch. Two outs. Thing is, I never ever think a ball is going to make our booth because it never yeah, does. Yeah, and the so second that it was off the bat, I knew it was coming. Had a chance. It yeah. Just had, had that look. Um, yeah, some ballparks you're keenly aware of the possibility. Back in old Tiger Stadium, my goodness, you were right on top of home plate in Tiger Stadium. I used to take a glove up there when I worked there. Ernie had a had a net in front of in front of the booth. It's not enough time to react. Under the category of what could have been, one shining moment had the play been made. <laughs> yeah, that was from our pregame. I knew. Apparently, I knew before the game that I was going to come oh so close. <laughs> Three balls, no strikes on Mezzarocco. Two more hits today. I need you to stand up next time. It's hard to catch a ball when you're sitting. Yeah, well, you, the one thing you don't want to do is catch it with your forehead. <laughs> right. Yeah, I did play it off to the side. Yeah, that so was smart. Two out walk. It'll bring up Cozart. He's one for three with a double, an RBI, and a run. It's going to be interesting to see what this Reds club does ultimately this year in terms of runs scored. You know, since you Chu was such a big part of it at the top of their order last year. That all lead off men with in terms of on base percentage. He also provided power. Now they've got Hamilton up there. So you figure he, you know, he's not getting on base as much as Chu. But if Mezzarocco develops into a, a real force offensively. They may, they may compete with what they did last year. Chris Heise on deck. That ball is thumped to left for a two run homer for Zach Cozart. It's now eight nothing. Coming into play today, the Reds were 12th in the National League and run scored. You know they're going to do better than that. This is an elevated fastball. A little bit much doubt when it left the bat where it was going to end up. Last year, Cincinnati finished third in the National League and run scored behind St. Louis and Colorado. In this lineup, their ballpark, they should be a very good offensive club. Here is Heisey. Adding for Homer Bailey. Who was terrific. Six shutout innings for Bailey. Came in with an 8.16. And he leaves with a 5.75 in terms of his ERA. In position to pick up his first win of the year, he will. Go to one and one with the W unless the Cubs can rally. He will go to five and one here at Wrigley Field in his career. Whew. 
curveball strike. There's a big tall guy, 6'6, 235, 240. Kind of works from a low three quarters arm angle, works underneath the ball a lot. It's tough to make major adjustments. He's been around a long time now. But when you watch him, you stand him out there, you feel like he's not really using his height. If he could get on top of the ball and get it going on a more downward plane and the home plate, that may serve him well. High pitch inning that has been a common theme for Varus. And a three two to Heisey. Way outside. Bring out the pitching coach. There's nobody up in the bullpen. Yeah, well, you know, they're, just, they're in a tough spot with Varus. They brought him in here to be the closer. And they've already moved on from that. Now they're going to try to salvage, you know. It's early, early in the year. And he said uh, when asked that he's healthy, he feels good. Yeah, that's certainly a question you, you ask uh, about a guy who much better track record than we've seen so far and the other part is you're down eight nothing you don't want to have to use too many guys here to close out this ball game. Billy Hamilton. So you're hoping to use this as a confidence building day for Varus it's been anything but. Digging deeper into that hole. So not holding on Heisey here in an eight nothing ball game. And in fact. Uh, <laughs> This is about as deep as you'll see the corner infielders ever play against Billy Hamilton. And the reason is this this score. This is where you start to get into those unwritten rules. Yeah, eight run lead in the seventh inning. It would be considered really bad form for Hamilton to bunt here. But if it's eight nothing in the fifth inning, I'd have my corner guys in. Can't ask a team to to slow down to stop stop trying to score in the middle innings. Saying that Casper dude, he, he can't make a catch, but I did. I did. That was a gentler pop up, though. Well, that curve has been a real struggle for him here this inning. Just can't seem to command it. Runner goes, swing and a miss. Time now for the seventh inning stretch brought to you by Budweiser. 
Today's guest conductor for Take Me Out to the Ball Game, the great grandson of Wrigley Field's architect, Todd Davis. All right, Cubs fans, let me hear you. A one, a two, a three. Take me out to the ball. game and played left for Ludwig and the new pitcher for the Reds is Manny Parra second look at Parra this weekend he's been a busy man on for the ninth time already for the Reds and he's pitched well a good job for them in relief last year former starting pitcher with the Brewers he's overcome some control issues got a niche in the Reds pen Bonifacio has reached twice today on a single and a walk, a steal, and he was caught once in virtue of replay review. Two balls, no strikes. Nationals beat the Cardinals 3 2. Got a run in the bottom of the ninth. Sacrifice fly by Denard Spann. Scoring Danny Espinosa. Just got Spann back. He'd been out a while. They're in the 12th in New York. Still tied. Braves and Mets. They're in the 12th in Pittsburgh. Brewers Ooh. and Pirates still nodded at two. 11th inning at Tampa Bay 1 1 Yanks and Rays. Yeah getaway day everybody playing extra frames. That's a fair ball. And Bonifacio. On his way to second. Oh home another multi hit game for Bonifacio he's had a bundle of them. Slapping it this way, carving it that way. This time he shoots it down the right field line. Bottle well off the line for him. Like NHL linesman there jumping over that ball. Sweeney one for two. And a hit by pitch. Ah! 
inside corner fastball. Too tight that time. 20 hits combined. The Reds have 13 of them. Fascio can't be very adventurous on the bases here with his team down a bunch. No, you're down eight. You're pretty much just playing station to station baseball. Obviously, on a base hit here. Easy for him to score. Gary Jones will green light him. Get Ryan Sweeney an RBI. Continue their road, road trip after this one. They'll head off to Pittsburgh. And we will see the Reds once again on the uh, Cubs' upcoming road trip. There's a base hit. The Cubs will get on the board as Bonifacio scores. Ryan Sweeney, RBI single, eight to one now. Nice job by Sweeney on a tough pitch. Went down and got it. Picks up his fourth RBI of the young season. Back to back hits to start the seventh. Side on Rizzo. Strike. Let's see Sean Marshall today. Activated off the DL yesterday. Let's see some uh, action sooner than later as Parra is struggling here in the seventh. There's the former Cub chatting with their. Fill in closer Jonathan Broxton. Spelling the injured Aroldis Chapman. Chapman continues to work his way back. He's been throwing some bullpens and he'll have a live BP session. Brian Price asked the. Uh, the writers of the Reds the media contingent if they'd like to stand in against Chapman when he did his first live BP but he, he found no takers.
be one of those bucket list deals for, for somebody. You know, not, you know, when, it, when he gets up to full speed, I want to stand in and just see what it looks like to watch a 102 mile an hour fastball. Well, I've been called dumb, but I'm not stupid. You put a lot of padding on just in case. <laughs> We'll count three and two, a run in, a man on, nobody out. And ball four. I'll give the Cubs credit here. You know, typically in a game like this, when it gets lopsided, the quality of the bats goes downhill, and sometimes the game moves along quickly. But here the Cubs are. Continuing to grind out at bats. Jeff Pico out to talk it over, and we will see some action. Looks like Sam LeCure is going to start to throw in their bullpen. You're the kind of guy you go to when you got a pitcher on the mound that's having a hard time with his control because the cure's got outstanding command. Brian Price said, hey, get somebody out there that can throw strikes, move this game along. It feels like a comfortable lead can turn ugly in a hurry. Off the glove of Phillips and into right center. Here comes Sweeney. The throw toward the plate is going to be late. Oh, that was a lot closer than I think everybody thought it was going to be. And it's eight to two. Yeah, I think a big sigh of relief for Gary Jones down there, the third base coach, because you cannot afford to get anybody thrown out when you're down seven runs. And this was close at home plate. Dave Bruce has an outstanding arm to hopper right on the money. Good hard slide by Sweeney, and he's in there. Not an issue, but uh, it would have been interesting if there had been a replay. Looked like Mazzarocco's foot was kind of blocking the plate just before he got the ball, but we don't have to get into that morass. <laughs> Thankfully. They overturned one. Uh, yeah, they did. The Philly, Philly Rocky game, man. Yeah. Play very much like that. Originally called out, and then overruled, called safe, saying that uh, Chucho Ruiz blocked the plate prematurely. Double single walk, single, two runs in, and an 0 1 to Castro outside. Garaka looked like he got crossed up with that breaking ball. He was trying to reach out like it was going to be a fastball away. Maybe 100 years from now, they'll be talking about the great Easter comeback of 2014. <laughs> One and two. Side two and two. The human peep. Deck. 
there's any chance he'll face Para if Castro gets on. It might not anyway. Make sure you get a strike. Nope. It's out number one. I'm a little anxious. That RBI situation, you want to do something, you get a little too jumpy, too overcommitted to swinging. So Parra stays in to face Alt. Looks at ball one downstairs. All three of Olds' home runs this year have come against left-handed pitching. Two off Wandy Rodriguez, Tony Sangrani, a lefty for the Reds yesterday, was victimized by Old. I'm a little bit surprised they haven't made the move to Lecure here for that very reason. Old popped the one here. All of a sudden, it's an eight to five ball game. Three and zero. Oh. Strike. Pull off the driver, big boy. A three one offering, he did. Swing hard, but he fouled it. To have that one back. Didn't miss it by much. Ipara, former teammate of Carlos Villanueva, who started this game for the Cubs. Is in Milwaukee. Who have uh, found his niche with the Reds in their bullpen? 57 appearances last year, low ERA in the threes. Struggling today. Ball four to load him up. And with that, here comes the manager, Brian Price. Now the Cubs trying to get back into this one in the seventh. We'll be back.
She's having a fun day at the ballpark and hoping the Cubs could come back late. Two runs here in the seventh. Came in trailing eight nothing and the bases are loaded. Sam LeCure is in for Manny Parra. A pretty dependable guy is LeCure. Four pitch pitcher. Good breaking stuff. Almost count on him to try to throw that little get over curveball for strike one. If he hangs it. Still could hit it a long way. Missed with it. Little guy that was catching peanuts earlier. Well, if the Great Easter comeback is going to happen, something good's going to have to happen right here. I would think. The 1 0 pitch is that curve you spoke of for strike one and one. Justin Ruggiano is on deck in the pitcher's spot. Kalish has already been used. Valbuena came in as part of the double switch earlier in the ball game. So Ruggiano, Lake, and Baker remain on the bench. Phillips makes the play and it's two. Cozart racing by, but it was the Gold Glover Phillips to turn the 4 3 double play. Daft Punk featuring Julian Casablancas with instant crush. Tweet us your selfies at hashtag WGN Cubs and we may use them in our fan cam. James Russell comes out of the Cubs pen after Wright and Barris. Daft Punk, those are the guys that wear the helmets, right? They're yes. Yeah, good call. Yeah, French guys. Getting it? Yeah. Up to speed with what the kids are listening yeah, well, to. Yeah, well, you know, I'd heard of Daft Punk, but I hadn't seen him until the Grammys this year. Those wacky kids. Wesley right an inning in a third, two scoreless.
could dance to that. I'd give it an 85. Jose Veras, one inning, two hits, three runs, all earned a couple of walks, a couple of long balls. Uh, see, uh, Votto's one of those guys you might as well attack early here because if you try to get him to chase, you're probably going to end up in that 3 2 count we see so often. Got him. Yep. Did not get the 3 2. That's, I like that strategy. Get, if you get the jump on him, you might as well attack him. You're so used to guys trying to nibble in those situations, he'll just disregard that off speed pitch and get into that full count. That's just a perfectly placed knee high fastball by Russell. Well, what a chance for the Cubs in the seven. Two in, bases loaded, one out. And LaCure got Castillo to bounce into a 4 3 double play to end it. And the guy at the plate turned it, Brandon Phillips. And he pops it up. Caught by Valbuena. So Phillips doing nothing with the bat in this series, but his glove is always a, a difference maker. It's like that back is still barking a little bit just watching him run down the line. Fourteenth in New York, twelfth in Tampa Bay, thirteenth in Pittsburgh. All those games still tied. Braves, Mets, Yankees, Rays, Brewers, Bucks. Phil Hughes with a win for the Twins, eight-three at Kansas City. His first win since last July. Well, Neil Walker showing signs of having a big year. That ball deep on the track, caught by Sweeney. Now Walker hit what is fourth, sixth, 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 sixth oh, right. wow. Again, tweet us your Cubs selfies. Eight two Reds. The producer of Cubs baseball on WGN Sports is Mark Brady, our director Skip Ellison, our associate producer Doug Stanton, our stage manager in the booth Paula Oscroba, our executive producer Bob Borwald. 
Joe Pizzo, our studio coordinator. Great work by our entire crew on this gorgeous day. Hasn't gone the way the Cubs had planned it to. Trailing eight to two late. Justin Ruggiano. Pinch hitter for James Russell. That's Lynn Bramer. He's not giving up. Our buddy from uh, XRT, the morning man. Got his rally cap on. Swing and a miss on a curve. It's one and two. Giano had a nice day and a start yesterday. Two hits plus a walk. And a real nice play out in right field. There's Marshall now playing catch. Two balls, two strikes. Oh, stay up there for Heisey. Balbuena. <laughs> Sending us their Cubs selfie. Outside to Luis. For one, he walked in the fifth, did not start the game, and then as part of a double switch. Change up misses low. So the Cardinals lost in DC today, they dropped to 11 and 8. Brewers came in with a two game lead. Still playing at Pittsburgh. Pirates and Reds both think they're a lot better than their sub 500 starts. This was a very tough division last year. Three teams made the postseason. Reds won 190 ball games last year, 197 in winning the division the year before. Last year they were knocked out in that wild card game. Against the Pirates. Yeah, they've been uh, in the postseason three times in the last four years, but early exits. The reason Dusty Baker lost his job. Here's Bonifacio after the walk to Valbuena. Ball strike. Chris Davis has just homered in the 14th, and Milwaukee has a 3 2 lead over the Pirates. Oh, and 2.
outside on a fastball. Francisco Rodriguez is the closer for the Brewers. And he's been really good. Renaissance of sorts. Six for six so far in save chances. A roller. And they'll get one. That's its second to force Val Buena. Uh, yeah, we call that a renaissance. Renaissance. So two outs at Sweeney. He's had a good day at the plate. Two for three and hit by a pitch. Knocked in the Cubs' first run in the seventh. Kershaw threw a simulated game today at Dodger Stadium. So he might be out on a rehab assignment soon. He's had upper back issues. That's why he's on the disabled list. Two and zero on Sweeney, cure to the plate at the knees for a strike. <laughs> strike two. Homer Bailey today went six shutout innings. Carlos Villanueva, four and two thirds, nine hits, five runs. Really good early. Ground ball, knocked down by Votto. Lecure over to cover the bag, and they get out of the inning. So the Reds lead eight to two as we head off to the ninth from Wrigley.
lead comfortably. Eight to two. Justin Grimm is on the bump. He's the fifth Cubs pitcher. He's on for the tenth time. That's the most anybody's got out there for the Cubs this year. And so far, so good. One and zero with a 1.04 earned run average. He hits 188 against him. Go over the top of the good curveball there. Curveball slider, lively fastball. Once again, happy Easter, everybody. The nicest days we've had this calendar year. Castro will pick it up and get Frazier for the out. I'm going to go home, have a little dinner, watch a little Wrigley 100. At 7 o'clock on WGN tonight. Seven to nine tonight. Celebrating 100 years at Wrigley Field. Naftali Soto hitting in the pitcher spot. One and one. Villanueva, Wright, Varis, Russell, and now Grimm. Two and two. Seagulls are for an early meal here late in the afternoon. Early dinner, so to speak. Well, it has been a very slow paced ball game. The goals are getting a little impatient. Oh, very late swing. Another ball. Ricocheting around in the Reds' dugout. So those got pretty good power numbers <clears throat> as a minor leaguer. Hit 30 home runs at Carolina back in 2011. Two away. Mezzarocco has caught the whole series. And why would Brian Price want to take him out? <laughs> Adding 500 here early on. Ground ball into center Damn. field for a base hit. That man is locked in. Not that easy. Started the year on the disabled list. It's a nine game hitting streak. He's hitting every game since he came off the DL. Cozart with a ground ball. And Castro just can't get it. And Cozart has three hits today double, homer, single. Or two out hitting for the Reds this time here in the ninth. 
King ball low and outside. <laughs> ball strike. Not that uh, Cozart will hit for the cycle today. He would Need another at bat. We would need to hit a triple, but I ask Red to do it. Eric Davis, 1989. Eric the Red. Before him, you had to go back 30 years. Frank Robinson in 1959. Very common occurrence in recent Reds history. Yeah, well, you know, you think back to their days at Riverfront Stadium, good home run ballpark, and on that turf, I think a lot of balls that might have been triples that probably ended up bouncing out of the ballpark. Right. Automatic doubles yeah. instead. And the cookie cutter stadiums with symmetrical outfield walls, so they're in those funky angles, deep alleys that sometimes yield triples. Not so much there. The ball would really jump when the summer months when it was hot. A place to pitch. Deep left field, Sweeney on the move. He made the running catch. Nicely done, Ryan Sweeney on the warning track. We'll go to the bottom of the ninth, eight to two, Reds. Chicago Cubs baseball brought to you by Budweiser. Great times are waiting. Grab some buds. Ford, manufacturers of America's best selling brand. Check out our best selling lineup at your local Ford store or online at localfordstores.com. And by Xfinity, your home for the most live sports. Not much happening early on today, and then the Reds started hitting with two outs in the fourth and the fifth. Uh, Carlos Villanueva, they would add three in the seventh off Jose Barris. Cubs with two in the seventh, and here's an ex Cub, Sean Marshall. He's had a lot of shoulder problems dating back to last year. But off the disabled list, he was activated yesterday as he faces Anthony Rizzo. And the strike. 
And Marshall with the Cubs from 2006 through 2011. Cubs got Travis Wood for him. And Marshall in 2010 pitched 80 times for the Cubs, 78 times in 2011, 73 times for the Reds in 2012. Maybe all that work taking its toll. Just 16 appearances with Cincinnati last year, a couple stints on the DL. Late to start this year because of shoulder discomfort in spring training. But when Sean is at his best, he, he really, as they say, pitches backwards. A ton of breaking balls early in counts, and then occasionally he'll try to sneak a fastball past the guy with two strikes. He's more likely to throw his fastball in this situation. Breaking ball, I believe, that time. Maybe a cutter at 87 and a base hit for Rizzo. Well, good work for Rizzo against a left handed pitcher. He's on for the fourth time today. Two walks, a little flare base hit first time, but good solid single here as he gets the hands pulled in and drives that one up the middle. Two hits, two walks for Anthony today. More good work against lefties. Sherholt swings and misses on a slider. The Bills who are content just to circle for a while, they're just they're landing now. They're just settling in. Curve low. Brown ball gets in the left. They were shifting to pull. The Cubs have two on with nobody out here in the ninth. Just two runs for the Cubs so far today, but plenty of traffic. They've had base runners in every inning but one. Strike called to Castro. We mentioned the 16 appearances last year for Marshall. 17 if you include the one game wild card round. And when he did pitch, he was very good. The throw will go to second. They will only get one. And it was close, but they got Sherholtz. First and third now. There was a time when Sean Marshall was a starter with the Cubs. But eventually it became pretty apparent that relief was his destination. And the numbers really bear it out as a starter 59 career appearances of 486 as a reliever 322 games ERA of 260. Broxton just in case I think they're going to keep a close watch on Marshall in his first appearance of the season Don't want him to throw too many pitches. J.D. not saying that Sean Marshall couldn't at some point start again, but I think 
he's got a pretty big body of work. Yeah, and I think at this point in his speak, career, yeah. speak for themselves. Well, I remember seeing him when he first came into the league, and he, he looked like a starting pitcher to me. Big, tall, lefty with good angles. You know, he had the repertoire that it looked like he should be able to go around a batting order three times. Good breaking stuff, good fastball command. But I think his effectiveness is due, at least in part, uh, to the way he pitches, as I mentioned earlier. There's not a lot of guys who do what he does uh, come in and throw curveball, curveball, slider, cutter, curveball, curveball, fastball. It's usually fastball, fastball, slider, fastball, fastball, slider. And good command with that curve. Mm -hmm. That curveball it missed outside three and two. When I mean, you could really match him up and you know with with Chapman, and you go well you go lefty lefty but very different styles. And Marshall, the breaking ball guy, and Chapman, high octane heater. Chapman's slider is probably faster than Marshall's fastball. Mm -hmm. Back to the trade, and there were some Cub fans who. Didn't like it when it occurred because Marshall was such a big part of the Cubs bullpen. I don't think anybody could really uh, go back and say that's not a trade they would make. No, no, no. You get Travis Wood who turned into an All Star, a big part of your rotation. And I think the the Reds would say they're very happy in what they got in Marshall, even though he was hurt last year. And Olt swings and misses, two outs. Sometimes trades can kind of work for both. Yeah, well, it doesn't have to be yeah, a winner and a loser. The GMs always say, right? The best, the best deal is one where everybody's happy at the end of the day. There's Travis Wood. He will take the ball tomorrow night against. A former teammate of his with the Reds, Bronson Arroyo. That'll be against the Diamondbacks. Castro takes second and will not be given a steal. Second and third, two outs, Cubs down a bunch. And the old one. Now one and one. Ooh. The uh, the backswing got uh, Mezzarocco. Unfazed. Inside. Yeah, that's a great example of what you're talking about. We saw with the strikeout of Volt to the, the slow breaking balls away and then cutter in under the hands at 86, 87 miles an hour. Junior Lake would bat next if Castillo can reach base. Oh, 
final the Brewers beat the Pirates 3 2 14 innings. In Pittsburgh. Yankees beat the Rays in 12 5 to 1. Mets got a run in the bottom of the 14th to make a winner out of Jose Valverde. It was a Curtis Granderson game winning sack fly. White Sox big over the Rangers 12 to 2 in the ninth. You see Edo Danks and Abreu of all homer. That's number five for Abreu. Rangers with just two hits in that ball game. Another 3 2 from Marshall and another foul. This one into the Cubs dugout. Interesting time for a conversation. Rizzo at third, Castro at second, two outs, ninth inning. Twenty fifth pitch of the inning. Bounded foul. <laughs> the, uh, the Cubs have not played a bad game today. I mean, the scoreboard obviously isn't good. But uh, defense has been good. The bats, man, they continue to battle after falling behind a bunch. Broken bat grounder, throw to first, stretch by Votto, and the ball game is over. You know, the Cubs with 11 hits today, but could only muster two runs as the Reds take two of three. Cubs just cannot get on a roll here. They still haven't won a series. Yeah, and it looked good early on. Carlos Villanueva in the early going was really, really good. Had seven strikeouts through three and a third, and then the the uh, Reds just ambushed them. Base hits started falling on extra base hits for this dynamic Reds lineup today. So the final, the Reds eight, the Cubs two. We'll be back to Wrigley Field in a moment. 